hello there. It's time for another kit. This is for SKU206172. Uh, big clock. And, well, it's a big clock. It's a big screen here, or segmented display. I must say, really thick PCB. There's an uh, aluminum case with the front. Here are all the LEDs, the resistors. And so there's a main circuit board, which I think goes below with we'll some headers here. We're gonna go through everything later. And there's a remote control. And uh, this is a lot of soldering. There's like something like 500, 500 soldering positions, so joints to solder on this one. So this is really good for trying out another thing. I bought myself a cheap Jihu 936 soldering station. No, it's not from Texas, even if it's called Jihu. It's Chinese, of course, and it's less than $20. So you get what you pay for, but I wanted to try it. It's dirty cheap. And if you buy one of these, remember, the first thing you really should do is open it up and take a check inside so nothing is loose because for you connect it to the mains voltage and something goes bad. So I'm going to try this. Uh, the only mistake I did was I didn't uh, order any extra tips or soldering iron tips because this is like a, it's more like a pointy spear. You kill small mammals with or something. It's not really that good for soldering. It should be a bigger surface up here at the tip, but I will try this one. Well, there's a lot of resistors. Yeah. And I'm going to check all of them because I want to know there are no bad ones. It's going to take a while, so I'm going to put you in a time lapse. So. I'm halfway, that means I have put in all the resistors it's, and it's time for the LEDs. And I've chosen the red version, which means all the resistors are the same value, even R, A, B, C, D. There's some, there are eight resistors that are a bit different. If you choose the blue version or the yellow version, they are going to be 330 ohms, not 320. So that's the easy part. I'm going to start putting in the LEDs. And when you're doing that, you also have to pick up the two 8-pin connectors. Because there is not that much clearance between the LEDs and these where the pins are going. So you want to put in all the LEDs, but not these four and these four. Or basically get the two closer so you can put in the pin first. Solder them in place and then put in the last LED. So. Yeah, the screen came together. Uh, <laughs> a lot of soldering. Uh, but not that hard. They are nicely pre tinned, these PCBs. So they are very stable, nice, I must say. Much more for the money when I thought. Uh, so this is finished. Put it to the side. And we're going to start working on the main PCB with the clock function. I was going to see if there's some the screws or stuff here. And it's based around a ship somewhere here. This is an um, STC 11F04E. That's a small microcontroller. That's which do all the work. And we must have something else here. Let's see. We have a 13A gram. 
SN74 HC and a driver chip and other things. So, but a nice thing is they have provided us with sockets for other integrated circuits, so we don't burn them by mistake during soldering. So I will have a look around here. There's the crystal, some ceramic capacitors, and there should be some transistor for the drawing in. Yes, S8550. Transistors, nothing strange with that. We have come to the point of installing the ICs or integrated circuits and uh, they're three sizes so it's not that hard to get the right van and as we have put the sockets in a correct direction you have the marks in which direction you're going to put them in but there's a small problem always that uh, the legs are a bit too wide so use a table or flat surface put down the IC check that they are straight in First direction first, then slightly bend the circuit over to narrow the legs a bit so it gets a bit easier to slide it down in the socket. Let's see, correct rotation and it goes in nicely. This one. Next one. Ooh, cracking sounds. I don't like that. Let's see. Last one. Why oh, didn't get that all the way down? Oh, you're flopping the briskets back there. So, and the last component is the infrared receiver square package. And you can't put it in like this because. Uh, front side is on this side so you had to turn it over and we don't want to block everything so first we bend all three leads backwards around ourselves Let's see if we can do this nice and easy without a plier and now we want to bend them the other way let's see i can use the solar gun good them. Uh, that works. Not a beauty, but it works. And we're gonna get them down there. I don't want to touch the battery, so I think I'm going to mount it a bit up from the PCB. So let's finish the soldering. Well, there's also a small tip. Uh, this component has three legs, and I'm just going to solder one of them. Let's see if we can get it tacked. Come on. There it is. So I can use that one to adjust the position. If you want to get it higher up, lower down, or something. And that's all so tip for this one. We do this solder only one leg on the LED and then adjust the position of the LED and solder the second one. And you get a nice flat and lined up. Do you like that? I like that. We are starting assembly of the, the screen here now and just some things. On this main piece of board, there's an arrow on one of these uh, connectors, and you also have an arrow here, so you get the right orientation, so you don't by mistake turn the display around. 
that's that. And um, my first problem is that I'm supposed to feed this USB cable through the hole in the side here, but the hole is too small, so I'm going to get a drill and make the hole a little bit bigger. Well, let's see. First power up test. This is a bit spooky because I've not tested it yet. Uh, there's no battery now, so according to the instruction, we should get four zeros. And let's turn off some light. We have four zeros. There's only one LED that's not working, so I'm going to check what I have done wrong. I have turned it the wrong way? Maybe. I'm going to check. Oh, there's one more. Well, let's do some uh, troubleshooting. So now we have a function display. I don't know if you can see the numbers. Four zeros so far. Uh, I have managed to turn two LEDs backward and one resistor had a bad soldering. So I, I'm going to check if a medium LED works later. So that's very good. And now we're going to put in the battery and put this thing together. It's in the case, and uh, nicely enough, we have uh, provided some extra LEDs. There's three of them. I haven't burned any, so I'm gonna save this, these three for later. If there is something wrong, I don't know. And we got only come to one, so let's see if it works. So now we come to the remote. Uh, let's see what's in the bag. There's a IC, which is a BA5104. I have to look what that is. There's the battery holder, transistor switches, and some small capacitors, and the case for it. And we have a PCB. And nicely enough, all the components are marked here. I think, yeah, not that hard to put together. And I must say, that quite nice PCBs. Uh, good soldering masks and uh, a nice setup where the components are going. So let's get to work. Here we are, half an hour later. Um, I don't know if I'm looking at the wrong place, but I couldn't find any instruction how to put this remote together. So let's see if it... Oh, it beeps! It does something. Oh, I can set... I can set that. Oh, annoying beeping, okay. That might need some tweaking. 15, now what time is it? 17. I don't want an alarm. Oh, I do like, okay. So I will try around a bit with keys and maybe I have some kind of explanation when the beeping is stopping. I don't want any alarm. 1727, let's see. Well, it's working so far. Uh, I'm gonna put it together. There's a lid that goes over and covers the PCB. And well, uh, this is not a short project. If you wanna do this, Set off a weekend to do it. Do not rush. I made some small mistake. I also made a mistake. Uh, put this together is not that hard. Overcompressor mark, but I forgot that you have to angle the uh, infrared diode. Here I put it straight up. It wouldn't function. You need to put it straight so you can send the signals to the clock. And other than that, it was nothing strange. Just follow the markings on the PCB. So uh, I'm gonna fit around with the keys and see how it works.
Well, let's take a look at the remote. Uh, I got my working quite nice now. I haven't put it the backside on yet, but it works now. Uh, your remote five buttons and the only button that is confusing me is the one to the right right now, but I do not know what that does because if I use the button to the right, if, if it's showing, the clock is showing the time, mine craps up. But uh, let's go through the rest of the buttons. Uh, the top button turns off the display, you want to turn off the LEDs. Uh, the mid button you use to adjust the time, you get back to that. Uh, the button on the low, you push that and you get the second, that's minutes and seconds and you push it again, you get back. And to the left you can turn off on and off the alarms. Uh, let's look at the alarms. If you push the mid button you can adjust the hours. If you push to the right you can adjust the minutes and when you're done you push the mid button to save a value. And here we get the alarm function. There are five alarms of this apparently we can set the time for. I will not test them now because I will not use the alarm because this beeping would kill me. And there's another function and when this is a countdown you can put in days and hours and I will not use that either because I just wanted the clock and a nice kit to build. And then you get back at the time. Turn it off. Turn it on. It works nicely and looks a bit homemade with an open PCB. So yeah, that's good. Uh, so if I got to mention it, the only problem I had was that I couldn't find any instructions for putting this one together. But now it works nicely. So have a good time.